Chapter 2 When Reality Comes Crashing Down Summary Trapped in a situation they don't fully understand, the group is already on edge. But when they realize what's truly going on, they don't quite know how to handle it. The next few hours passed in relative silence. Every little sound had the group on edge. They were trapped in an unknown location, after all. Eventually, though, something happened. The lone metal door in the room opened with a soft hiss. The teens were immediately on guard, shifting in crouching positions and keeping sight of the door. May pushed defensively towards the back of the group of hero students. Through it stepped the familiar form of one of the cockroach-like people Zuku had glimpsed. The person had a rather oval-shaped body, torso resembling that of a cockroach's with a slit where wings could be assumed to come out. Long black antenna looped out from the person's bug-like head. Their whole body looked sturdy yet lightweight. Azuku couldn't understand how mutation quirk could make someone look like that. Bugs in general made Azuku squirm, but this thing was different. Something about it was a little too inhuman and had Azuku on edge. It calmly approached the cage and pushed a bucket through the bars, revealing an odd second set of smaller arms. As it turned to leave, Uraraka spoke up. Who are you? What do you want with us? At Uraraka's desperate pleading, the bug person laughed, or did what Midoriya could only assume was a laugh. The being let out a grating mix of clicking and gurgling before saying something in a strange language that didn't sound like anything the group had ever heard before. It dipped its head into the hall, and another cockroach-like being came into the room. Azuku caught sight of what looked like a dark window before the door closed. The two spoke back and forth before breaking out into that horrible laugh, sending Azuku's skin crawling. What was so funny about what Uraraka said? Why did they seem so casual about having kidnapped six Yoi students and stuffing them in a cage? A sudden jolt had the kids tumbling into one another, and a clicking grumble was expressed by the original bug person. The two then paid the group no more mind, turning in tandem to walk through the sliding doors. This time when they opened, Azuku focused on what he had glimpsed before. A metal-framed window revealed an inky black expanse in the distance for as far as the eye could see. Minuscule stars dotted the space while some large celestial object came quickly into view. It was a distinct shade of blue with white streaks painted sparsely throughout. As the door shut, Zuku realized why it looked so familiar. He paled as the pieces came together around him. Inhuman beings, otherworldly speech, seeming turbulence, the inky expanse, and far too close planetary body. Azuku paled further as he turned towards the group. I think we've been abducted by aliens. What? Bakugo barked in disbelief, eyeing Deku like he had lost his mind. But then, May piped in. I think Azuku was right. Did you see the window? That was Neptune right next to us. And that language is unlike anything I've ever encountered. She stated hurriedly. Her breathing was starting to pick up. The group seemed thoughtful as they one by one pieced together things for themselves. The resulting shock was overwhelming. They were in space, too far from Earth for anyone to ever stand a chance of rescuing them. That's even if they knew what really happened. They were all alone, on a ship with alien abductors and no chance of rescue. Without access to their quirks or any ideas on how to escape, and these aliens seemed organized and somehow had access to some sort of quirk suppressant. Reality came crashing down hard all around them, as hard as it was to believe. May's breathing continued to pick up her eyes blown wide, staring straight forward at the blank wall. Bakugo began furiously yelling, every word laced with millions of undecipherable emotions. Danky was barely audible over Bakugo as he just rocked himself back and forth, mumbling to himself under his breath. Mina had gone silent and still, unfocused eyes not quite there with them. 
while Uraraka turned to Deku to ask a simple question. Are we gonna be okay? But Izuku didn't hear her. He wasn't aware of the various states of panic his companions were in. All that he was aware of was the swarm of racing thoughts in his head and the sense of hopelessness that was washing over him. After a long while, the teens slowly came out of their dazes. They had finally processed what was going on and thankfully had not imploded from the sheer impossibility of it. But coming back to themselves wasn't in some big moment. It was gradual and quiet, bodies shifting closer together to take comfort in the other's presence, tear tracks slowly drying up from raw, red eyes. Nothing was said as the ship slowly began to shift into darkness, only a faint artificial glow left behind. Azuku pressed himself into Uraraka and Denki, reveling in the warmth compared to the cold metal floor of the cage and chilled air. May and Mina quickly settled around them, all tucked close to each other, but Bakugo sat in the corner of the cage, pointedly looking away from the group Cuddle Puddle. Azuku looked at Kachan with sad, tired eyes. He's always been stubborn, even to his own detriment, but this was not the time. Izuku gently reached out to brush against Bakugo's arm. The blonde's head immediately snapped towards Deku at the contact. Izuku just retracted his arm and waved Bakugo towards the group. He was met with a stubborn glare, but Izuku didn't back down. He just stared at Bakugo until he heard a resigned sigh. Bakugo shuffled over towards the group and settled by Mina, just barely close enough to touch, but not really cuddle up. It was enough for now, though, so Izuku closed his eyes and drifted off to sleep. Notes I really want to move on to the main focus, but it needs to be set up. Sorry if this might seem a little rushed. I'm trying my best. <laughs>